Hello, welcome to this video that will help you to start with the individual programming exercise, the one about human behavior prediction. So the exercise is the human behavior prediction. So we basically need to implement a game like this one. So the first thing you need to do is print the opening message. Well, a simple print would, would do. You need to put your name at the end. So if you run this, I'm going to save it as test one dot pi. And if I run it, I get the message with the print. Next, we need to get the, the option one or two from the user. So if I run this, I'm able to get an option one, for example, but it's missing. I'm not associating to any variable. So I need to do, I need to call it, I'm going to call it select difficulty. And if I run this again with the yellow button here, I'm able to get it. And I can see that the selected difficult was one, but it's the type string, as you can see here. So what I need to do is I need to put int in here. And if I do that, I'm now able to get a one and it's going to be the type integer. The problem is if I run this again and I enter a letter A instead, it's going to give me an error. That's the uh, one of the bonus parts that is being able to grab any value if, even if it's not a the correct one and reject it and grab the new one the correct one in this case one or two we also need to select the number of moves we can do that with by doing the same thing printing a message and requesting the number of move i will use five so now i have an integer with five in here. So we implement the game for select difficult equal equals to one and for that I need to do a four and my number of moves were five so I need to do a turn here in range moves. So that's gonna make me, and if I do a print here, and I get the variable turn, I'm able to run this and select difficulty is not spelled correctly. Now it should be spelled correctly. So I'm able to run zero, one, two, three, and four time so exactly the number I've entered five times so it's a good idea always to test your code before proceeding before going forward before implementing anything so I just printed to see if my for and my if was correct done so now I'm gonna comment out this and I'm gonna grab the player player move and I can do that with int input and then put a message here. The message will be choose your number zero or one. And if I do that, what am I going to get? Choose your number zero and one. Good. Now I have the player move. However, I requested something a little bit more sophisticated I requested to have choose your move number one choose your move number two choose your move number three so first I have to add move here and second I have to put the number of the turn here so if I do that I can do that by concatenating and putting turn in here let's see what happens if I run this now I have the number four because I've run everything and I can get number four so if I run inside the loop 
I run everything, it's going to say choose the number 0 and then your choice point for number 1, for number 2 and for number 3 and for number 4. But what I actually wanted, if you remember in the in the doc, the documentation is 1, 2, 3 and 4 and 5. So I need to add 1 in here. In, in by, the, by doing that I'm able to get the number 1 and number 2 and number 3 and number 4 and number 5 as you can see in here. In the documentation you requested to implement a function called method of linear congruence that is in here. So I like to put functions at the top so to define a function you do this and then you call I'm going to call the function linear congruences and congruence and I'm going to pass a parameter to it that is going to be the seed as you can see in the documentation the x0 I'm going to put a doc string in here and I'm going to define the, the three parameters that comes already defined in the function a b and c and basically the formula is as it appears in the documentation and after that you need to implement what's going to be the computer move if it's below 2 to the to the potential to the power of 31 and finally because it's going to be a function you have to return it the comp move okay now we're able to call the function here at the bottom so we get the computer move as linear congruence so if I try to run this code here I'm gonna get an error saying that the linear congruence is not defined because I'm running pieces and bits of this code I have to grab this code you know of the function the definition and run it before being able to run it but I'm gonna get another error and the error has to do that I'm not passing the parameter x as in the documentation we are supposed to create a x0 that we're going to pass it as an initial key and I'm gonna an initial seed and I can then create it first and then I pass this x0 as a to the function and then the function will give me the computer move as you can see here but there is a more if I run this function thousand times I'm always gonna get the same result why because my x0 is always being the same in the documentation we can see that we have to base the x y i plus one based on the x i so I need to pass x i so that I it's not always x0 that I have to pass I have to record it somehow so how am I gonna do that I'm gonna do that by also grabbing x0 here and so I need to come back to the function and I need to return what was the linear value and that's my x0 so I pass the x that's my x0 the x here so I'm gonna to make it simpler for you to understand I'm gonna call this x uh, xi and this guy is my xi plus 1 and xi plus 1 here and xi plus 1 here so actually my xi my x0 is not x0 anymore it's xi and I'm passing xi and I'm recording as xi here and this way you will be able to see in here that this value will change as I go along and so first let redefine the function because if I don't it will complain let's not do it it will complain because xi is not defined so I have to define the xi 
redefine the function to be able to run this code. And now, as you can see, now I got a zero. And if I carry on running it, I'm probably going to get a one at some point here. Yeah, one. So I'm getting ones and zero. So it's actually generating a number. And my xi is changing every time. Every time I run, my xi is changing. So now I can compare both the player and the computer moves to see if it if the computer wants, if it was the same move, zero and zero, or one and one, computer wins. So I'm gonna say machine wins. And then I'm gonna print both the number of times the machine won and the computer won. And also I'm gonna print this as, as a result. Problem, I haven't, what's gonna happen if I run this piece of code here, because it's complaining of something, it's saying that MS is not uh, defined. The problem is I'm creating a cumulative variable here that is that is recording the number of moves, the, the number of times the computer won, but I haven't initialized it. So I need to come back here at the top and initialize my MS. So I'm gonna be able to add and then ms is going to be as i can see here number two okay great however ps is also undefined so i should ps is going to be my player wins so i'm, I'm able to print both of them and if it wasn't the computer who won, who won then? It was the person, the individual person that won. So I can come here and make sure you use the, the good indentation. So that's going to be the player who won. Now if I run this piece, this piece of code here, I'm probably going to be able to play a game. Oh, PS is undefined. I haven't run this bit in here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start again my initialization and I'm gonna run from here. And then I'm able to beat one, you win, you win two times, you win three times, computer one, one time, and you win again. Now the documentation requests us to print a message with players and, num and stars uh, to make the game more visible. So if I run this again with that message, what we're going to get is, if I do 0, 0, 0, you can see that every time I'm getting the number of winnings from the players with stars and then with the computer with stars as well. You may be asking yourself, uh, the way, because of the way the function is defined and we define in the x0, I probably can guess all the computers move because I'm always starting with the same seed. Yes, you're correct. I can, if I put 1 as a move, sorry. If I put 1 as a move, the computer will, I can guess the computer will put 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1. So the computer won all my guesses because I've entered the sequence 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1. And why is that? It's because of my seed. If I need, a, if I want a new sequence, I can choose a new number. And then if I change, if I try the same sequence 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1, I'm not getting the same results of the linear formula. And why would you want a behavior like that not to be random and to repeat for debugging purpose? Let's say you have problem on your code and if you fix the seed here, every time you play you get the same sequence so you know the behavior that should happen in the game. So now guys, that's your turn to implement the difficult two and then also to implement a main loop that will repeat these times and times again until the person says, I don't want to play anymore.
good luck.